research. There are 13 design teams right now that are working on detailed plans for realizing the vision. Eight of them are working on research initiatives, and there are five design teams working on how to support the foundation. One of them is working on flexible resources to help power all areas of research and research-based education at Stanford. The mission of the Stanford Social Exchange is to position Stanford as a trusted partner in working with governments and nonprofits and philanthropic institutions who are working on social problems in the world and want to use science in powerful ways to shape the policies that they implement, the programs that they design. I'm an economist. I'm trying to find better ways to think through the root causes of poverty. I focus on basic capabilities, health, education. One example is work I've done on HIV prevention for young adolescents. I've done work in Kenya on this topic. So I designed a curriculum that you could deliver in schools. We compare it with what happens when they receive the traditional curriculum. We find that you know, the module I design works much better. It reduces teen pregnancy, which is a good marker for unprotected sex. And importantly, these pregnancies that are averted are the pregnancies that would have happened with older partners. So I think of applied social science research as building the evidence base that decision makers need to transform people's lives for the better. The social X captures a commitment to the social sciences and a sense that there are innovative frontiers that need new resources and commitments to explore. The exchange is about the fundamental connection between ideas and experiences that exist outside the university and ideas and experiences that exist inside our disciplines in the university that need to be brought together. The opportunity is there to make Stanford second to none as a leader in doing problem-focused research. Well, the four themes within our Changing Human Experience project are the changing human body, the changing human mind, the changing globe, which has been pulled together so much more than ever before, and changing political communities. But the great problem is how difficult it is for us to understand what these changes mean. We need to be able to look back to the very origins of modern humanity in order to understand what we're doing now and what's likely to happen in the coming century. One aspect of the changing human experience is art, and in my own research I'm particularly focused on art made by people of color, made by people whose experiences have not been closely studied, people like refugees or immigrants. For example, in my research, studying the 1882 Chinese Exclusion Act, which was the first nationality-based immigration law, has allowed me to kind of think about the broader implications as well as causes of things like the contested border wall between Mexico and the United States now. I think that artists, because they are articulating questions and ways of being in material form, they allow us to see not only new perspectives on those histories, but also allow us to understand just what it felt like to live at a particular moment, at a particular time, in a particular body. Our project is all about pure research, knowledge for its own sake. Well, Stanford is different from most of the universities in the world, in that there are very, very few universities that combine absolute first-rank science, engineering, medicine departments with absolutely first-rank artistic, humanistic, social scientific departments, which suggests to us we have this unique opportunity to make Stanford the place that leads the way in the interpretation as well as the transformation of the human experience. design team started by talking about what does it take to really translate ideas into solid research and scholarship. We've settled on two priorities. One of them is the appointment of research initiative directors who will help select exciting research possibilities within particular topical areas and themes. The second initiative is to increase graduate fellowships across the entire university. In the modern funding landscape, it's increasingly difficult to get funding for the most early stage, risky, high impact ideas. 
The Flexible Resources Initiative will help people get funding that they need in order to get initial results to make them more competitive for federal funding or to work on topics where external funding isn't available. So if a student in a particular field needs access to research computation or particular data sets or a particular type of electron microscope, our dream is that every scholar would be able to access all of those resources, not quite as easily as they can check out a book from the library today, but almost as easily.